Hallen believes that the random variable c, representing cloud cover from the large data set, can be modelled by a discrete uniform distribution. Part A asks, write down the probability distribution for C. Now, for this question, we need to have some knowledge of the large data set. Uh, and more specifically, we need to know about cloud cover and what it's measured in. Uh, so if we were to look at the large data set, we would see that cloud cover is measured in octas, uh, which is a way of measuring cloud cover uh, that has a range of zero to eight, which means cloud cover can only be an integer between zero and eight. Um, there's no, no decimal points in this system, um, which means it is discrete, which is something we're told in the question as well. So if the random variable C can only be uh, an integer from zero to eight, we can draw this on a, on a um, table. So if we draw out that lowercase c uh, can only take a value between zero and eight, uh, then we can say that the probability of the random variable c being equal to one of these um, nine numbers must be equal because we're told in the question that Helen believes the random variable c can be modelled by a discrete uniform distribution. Uh, and what uniform means is that the probability of it being one must be the same as another. So the probability of c being equal to zero has to be the same as the probability of c being equal to four, for example. Uh, and this is the same for every single value of c. Uh, and then what we can say because of this is if there are nine possible values that c can take, then the probability of each one must be one ninth. Uh, and so if we fill this into the table, where every one is one over nine, then this is our probability distribution for C, um, because this is all the values that C can take and the probability of each. Now, this question was mark worth two marks, uh, and our first mark comes from giving a correct set of values for C, um, which we have done here uh, on the top row of this table. Um, so giving 0 to 8 uh, as our set of values of C. Uh, and our second mark also then comes from getting the right probabilities from this value of C. So getting 1 ninth for every single one um, gets us a second mark. Part B is now asking us to use this model uh, and find the probability that cloud cover is less than 50%. Now, we know that if cloud cover can only take uh, a value between 0 and 8, that 50% must be when c is equal to 4, uh, which we can see on our probability distribution is here, because that's the number that's in the middle. Um, so then we can say that what this is asking is that if cloud cover is less than 50%, that this means that we want the probability that the random variable c is less than four. If four is 50%, then we need C to be less than 50%, less than four. And now the way we can find this uh, is by looking back at our table, our probability distribution. And we can see that the probability of C being less than four must be this probability plus this one, this one, and this one. Uh, and the reason it's not the probability of C equals four as well is that we want it to be less than four, not less than or equal to four. Uh, and so with this information, we can say the probability of C being less than four must be equal to one over nine plus one over nine plus one over nine plus one over nine, which is the same as four multiplied by one over nine, which is four ninths. Uh, and that's all we have to say. Uh, the probability that cloud cover is less than 50% is therefore four ninths. Uh, and now this gets us uh, the one mark needed because um, we just have to state that the probability of C being less than four is equal to four ninths, which we've done here. Helen used all the data from the large data set for Hearn in 2015 and found that the proportion of days with cloud cover less than 50% was 0 0.315. Part C asks, comment on the suitability of Helen's model in light of this information. So we just found in part B that the, prob the probability of the cloud cover being less than 50% was four ninths, which is 
equivalent to 0.4 recurring. But Helen has just found that now the proportion of days with cloud cover less than 50% was 0.315, which is much less than 0.4 recurring. And so this is quite a big difference in terms of probability. Uh, the fact that the actual value is zero point, more than 0 0.1 um, less than what we thought it might be um, is quite a big difference, uh, which is not a good thing. And so we can say that the probability uh, is actually lower than we expected it to be. Uh, and what this suggests is that Helen's model is not suitable uh, in light of this new information. Now, this will get us the one mark available for the question. Um, we just had to state that because the probability was lower, then the model isn't as good as we thought it would be. It's not suitable. And that is one mark. Now, part D is asking us to suggest an appropriate refinement to Helen's model. Uh, and there are a number of different things we can say. Uh, but one of them is that originally we assumed that the distribution was discrete uniform distribution. Uh, we were told right at the start of the question. Now, the problem with assuming that the distribution is uniform is the fact that this doesn't take account of any changes in season, in the weather, uh, in different places even. Um, cloud coverage in one place is not necessarily the same as the cloud coverage in another place, even at the same time. Uh, but modelling it as uniform distribution does not take account of this. So we can say that because cloud coverage can vary over different months, different seasons uh, and places, uh, we should use a non-uniform distribution uh, instead of a uniform distribution, uh, well, as this will take account of this a bit better. Now, this will get us the one mark required for the question. We just had to state um, a problem with Helen's model and therefore how we would fix it. So a problem is the fact that cloud coverage varies uh, and therefore we fix this by using a non-uniform distribution, and that's one mark.